Perfect. All right. Thanks, Eric. Um, thanks for coming out, everyone. Um, bit of a change up here. I'm, uh, I, I was with a gold company, as Eric mentioned, called Bayfield Ventures. Uh, what we did with Bayfield, which is uh, exactly what we're trying to do here with Sky Harbor, uh, is uh, explore, discover, delineate a resource, and ultimately look to sell the company. Uh, we did that successfully with Bayfield, a gold project in Ontario. We were acquired by a larger gold, gold mining company called New Gold. Uh, at the time, my team and I in Vancouver um, were looking at uh, starting a new company. Um, I, I did a lot of homework at the time. Um, I, I was, uh, was looking at getting back into the precious metal space, uh, doing, doing that again with Bayfield. But what really stood out to me at the time was uh, a real contrarian, deep value opportunity in the uranium sector. And uh, it's a very uh, interesting space. Uh, it's a very misunderstood space. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I'm a big believer in the commodity. I'm a big believer in nuclear. I think it's here to stay. I'll tell you why through this uh, presentation. And uh, most importantly for us, we, we, we saw two things. One, um, a commodity that had basically been decimated, both the price and the, and the equities, the mining companies, by uh, what was really a, a, a couple of black swan events, um, but obviously Fukushima. Uh, and, um, and we saw a sector that basically had a mass exodus of, of companies. When I'm looking at uh, you know, the other commodities, um, there's a, a lot of different products, companies you can invest in. And that's what I really like about uranium. And still to this day, it's, 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 it's gotten even more so. Uh, if you're looking to get investment exposure to that commodity, uh, it's very limited. Um, there's a lot of governments, obviously, and state-run enterprises that, that manage these companies. There was a lot of consolidation uh, at, the, at the top of the market back in 2010, 2011. So there's really only a handful of us left. You're not buying physical uranium unless you have a massive fund to do so with. Uh, there's, there's basically two ETFs. So really at the end of the day, where is investment capital going to going to park at money when this sector turns around and it's going to be the mining companies and so our, our philosophy is go out there acquire projects at attractive valuations we've been able to get our hands on some incredible assets in the number one mining jurisdiction in the world which is the which is saskatchewan as ranked by the fraser institute uh, as of a month ago um, acquire these projects build a team with focused expertise on your high-grade uranium exploration and discovery in the athabasca basin We've done that. Bring in strategic partners to help fund the exploration on some of the other projects. Our largest shareholder is a company called Denison Mines. They're the fifth largest publicly traded uranium company in the world, do listed on New York and TSX. It's a Lucas Lundin company. The president and CEO of Denison Mines, a gentleman named Dave Cates, is on our board. We have a very close working relationship with Denison. Secondly, we consummated a deal with a company that probably a lot of you are familiar with uh, just across the border here called Arriva. So we have a strategic partnership with Arriva. They're acquiring a project of ours um, in, the, in the basin as well. I was just in Paris at their offices. So we've been able for a small company to partner up with some big names, which, which is key. So um, I'll get into the presentation. I'll talk a little bit about uranium. It's, uh, I know it's a hot topic. Um, I'm more than happy to talk more about it because I won't have enough time here. Uh, but I really do want to focus on what are the key catalysts for Sky Harbor, right? If you're looking at it as an investment opportunity in a bear market, why are you buying shares of this company? So I want to start, uh, I like to focus on the th really the three pillars of the company, people, timing, and projects, right? And people with these companies, as we know, is, is arguably the most important ingredient for success. Uh, when we started this company four years ago, that was the, really the, f the first mandate we had was to put together a, a, a team that knew how to go out there, find these deposits, uh, most importantly at the time actually be able to raise the capital to go carry out uranium exploration, but find the right technical team that has, again, focused expertise in the Athabasca Basin. It's great having hundreds and hundreds of years of experience in the industry. Uh, as you can tell, I don't have hundreds of years in exp of experience in the industry, but I have a team 
that has very focused expertise in the Athabasca Basin. So uh, as Eric mentioned, um, uh, I, I'm based in Vancouver. Um, I come from more of a finance background. I was with Bayfield Ventures. I worked with a few mining companies uh, in the past. Started this company about four years ago. I worked with Jim Pettit, the chairman, who uh, has a few more gray hairs than I do. Uh, him and I worked together in Vancouver. Uh, I want to highlight, though, my head geologist, Rick Kazmersky. Um, Rick is a 40-year veteran in the Athabasca Basin. He knows how to go out there. He's found multiple deposits in the Athabasca Basin, high-grade uranium. He was with Cameco. He was the, actually the exploration manager for the world's largest publicly traded uranium company for about 15 years. Senior, senior geologist at Cameco. He left Cameco in 1999 with a vision much similar to what I had four years ago, starting a junior uranium company called JNR. If you had bought JNR in 2000 when he started it at $5 million valuation, it moved up to 500 million in 2007, and that was on the back of discovery and on the back of an improving uranium market. He ended up selling JNR to Denison Mines, and that's where it's come full circle. We have that relationship with Denison Mines as our largest strategic shareholder. David Cates, he's the president and CEO of Denison Mines, UPC as well. Again, uh, the, one of the largest publicly traded uranium companies. He's on our board. Very close working relationship with them and their team. Our flagship project is very close to Wheeler, which is their flagship project. Wheeler will likely be the next producing uranium mine in the Athabasca Basin. Uh, and there's a lot of operational synergies, potential operational synergies between our flagship, which is called Moore Lake, and Denison's flagship, Wheeler. So very important member of the team, also a large shareholder. Last but not least, I want to highlight a gentleman named Paul McTizek. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with Paul. He's very well known in our industry. Paul's built and sold four mining companies in the last 12 years. He, he really is a titan. And most importantly, and most importantly for us and our shareholders, he knows how to get these companies sold. Again, our mandate here, our, our whole business model, build this company up, delineate a resource, make discoveries, and sell the company. Paul's done it four times, and his biggest win was a company called Energy Metals, a uranium company, $10 million in 2004. A short three years later, he sold it for $1.8 billion to Uranium One. So Paul's a very large shareholder. He's a strategic advisor to the company as well. So just quickly, uh, before I get into Uranium Market and our projects, you can see we have a listing TSX, Venture, Frankfurt, as well as in the U.S. We have a pretty large U.S shareholder base now, uh, 53 and a half million shares out. It's a small cap company, right? This is the opportunity. I mean, we, we are trading where uranium is trading at right now at a significant discount. Uh, $23 million market cap Canadian. We just raised some money at about a 40% premium, no warrant to our current share price. We're trading around 44 cents Canadian. We raised money at 60 cents, mostly institutional. The lead order was actually a fund out of China. We've seen a lot of Chinese money coming into the Athabasca Basin recently. Some of the other larger shareholders down here, um, I, I won't go through all of them. Some of you might be familiar with Marin Katuza uh, out of Vancouver, well-known resource investor. He's been the cornerstone investor on this company from day one. Uh, behind Denison Mines, he's the second largest shareholder, him and his fund. So uh, the uranium market, um, I'll try to give you the Coles notes as much as I can. I'm more than happy to talk more about it. But when we look at the uranium market right now, there's a simple fact that really stands out. You have a $20 uh, a pound spot price right now. At $20 a pound, not one sing single producing asset in the world makes money. So just think about that for a second. Not one mine is profitable at $20 uranium. The lowest cost producing mine, the Inkai mine in Kazakhstan, is break even at $22.50. The only reason these mines are still operating is because a lot of them have these long-term contracts at higher prices. 80% of those contracts expire in the next six years. So what's going to happen when, that, when those contracts roll off? One of two things. Either the mining companies are able to negotiate higher prices with the fuel buyers, or they shut down production. If shut down production, that's bullish for the spot price. We've seen just in the last six months a number of notable production cuts, one of which being out of Kazakhstan earlier this year. That's where you saw the spot price jump up and all the equities follow suit. There's a lot of speculation out there right now that Kazakhstan will make another production cut given that they're not making any money at $20 uranium. The average all-in cost globally for right now for all the operating mines is about $41, $42 uranium, double where the spot price is. 
The price needed to incentivize new mines to come online, pipeline projects to be built, is 60 to $65 uranium, triple the spot price right now. So when we talk about there being a contrarian opportunity, I think this is one of the best commodities out there for that. If we look at the supply demand picture, you have here 180 million pounds of annual demand, 160 million pounds of annual primary mine supply. We're already in a shortfall. Now, why has the price deteriorated as much as it had and it has and stayed low? Simple reason, secondary supply. There's been a lot of secondary supply. There still is a lot of secondary supply, and that's what's been hurting the market. So we can't pretend that that isn't there. But as we've seen in previous cycles, you look at the period from 1999 or 1998 to 2004, you look back in the 70s, even the 50s, when you do have secondary supply that keeps prices depressed, and eventually when those secondary supplies subside, you just didn't have the new mines coming online to meet that demand. And that's exactly what's happening, unfolding right now in the uranium space. You do not have any meaningful new mine supply coming online in the next five years. The biggest two mines that recently came online, Cigar Lake in, in the Athabasca where we are, and Husab, uh, which is a Chinese mine uh, in Namibia. And Husab has had a whole bunch of problems. Their average cost, a lot of people are guessing, it's around 60 to $70 a pound. It could even be higher, uh, speaking with the, the, the people at Arriva the other day. So uh, it's an interesting scenario playing out, very compelling supply demand. The demand side continues to grow. This is something that a lot of people misunderstand. Demand is growing in China, in India. A lot of people don't know this. More nuclear electricity capacity came on the grid in 2016 than any year in the last 30 years. The Chinese right now, 58 reactors under construction, the Chinese are building 18 of those. These new reactors, they're much bigger, they're safer, they consume a lot more uranium. But they're under construction. We're not talking about what could happen 20 years down the road. We're, we're talking about what's happening right now. 58 reactors under construction. They consume more uranium than the old Gen 1 reactors. And they're online in the next two to three years. As I said earlier, Kazakhstan on the supply side, low prices is starting to affect supply. We're seeing big producers cut supply. We will continue to see that. And that'll be positive for the, the spot price going forward. So I'll skip over here. Um, this slide, I think, for all of us in this room, for all the precious metal bugs, this is a very important slide. I want to highlight this, right? So for those of you more familiar with gold and silver companies and, and, and grades of deposits and all that, make a note of this slide. This is why we look for uranium in the Athabasca Basin. It's the highest grade depository of uranium in the world. It's a geological anomaly. It's in northern Saskatchewan. Look at the grade equivalent of 1% uranium, 20 grams per ton of gold, 1,400 grams per ton of silver, almost 14% copper. 1% is a mediocre grade in the Athabasca Basin. We just finished a drill program, our first drill program at our flagship project since acquiring it last year. We had a drill intercept that returned 6% over six meters, and within that we had 21% over a meter and a half. That's equivalent to 420 grams per ton of gold. Very, very high grade, very rich ore. And that's where you get the low cost. That's why the Athabasca Basin is a low cost producing region in the world, because it's very high grade. And for exploration companies, I'll go to this slide here. This is what excites me. Let's assume the uranium price stays at $20 for the next two years. Why invest in Sky Harbor? One simple reason, discovery potential. Take NextGen, take Fission. A lot of you are probably familiar with these companies that have had discoveries in the last few years. NextGen Energy has gone from a, oh, there we go, $30 million market cap to over a billion in the last three years, while the commodity has gone from $45 to $20. Why is that? High grade discovery, world class discovery that they made. Similar story here with Fission, with Alpha. This just shows you you don't need a booming commodity to create value, to create wealth for shareholders. That is the model here at Sky Harbor. We have the team to do it, and that's what we're going after on our flagship project. So if you go over, uh, we go over to this slide here. This just shows you, just to finish off on the projects, five projects. Scattered throughout the Athabasca Basin, this has taken us the, the four years to build. Again, we've been very opportunistic in, in acquiring these projects. Uh, you'll see here on the east side, so this is the, where the infrastructure and mills are, Moore Lake, that's our flagship project. We acquired that a year ago. 
So we just finished this drill program. There's high grade and most importantly shallow uranium mineralization at this project. We're proving up. There's a small deposit there. We're expanding it. We're also looking to make additional discoveries on this project. There's a lot of upside potential there. There's a lot going on geologically. One of the things we're looking at doing, for those of you familiar, I won't get too much into the geology, but in the basin you have basically two types of deposits, unconformity or sandstone hosted, and then basement hosted deposits. The new, the new exploration and techniques and methodology and thinking has been looking for your high-grade uranium in what's called the basement rock. That's next gen, that's fission, that's Denison's Griffin uh, deposit. This project, a lot of the historical drilling done back in the late 90s, early 2000s, they were not looking for high-grade uranium in the basement rock. All the high grade that's there currently is at the unconformity or in the sandstone. So a lot of these bigger, higher grade deposits that have been found recently, all in the basement rock, that's one of the areas we're going to be looking at in more at Moore Lake. So that's the flagship. That's where you're going to see the most news flow. That's where we're spending our money. We got, as I said, just under $4 million, $2 million in drilling over the next 12 months, probably be about eight or 9,000 meters of drilling. So lots of news flow. We saw earlier this year good drill results and the share price responded quite positively. Uh, on, the other, on these other projects that you see here, four other projects, a lot of property, very, very uh, highly prospective ground. This one project, Falcon Point, has a 7 million pound NI43-101 compliant deposit as well as a thorium credit. Um, what we're looking to do with these projects, instead of us having to go raise money in a difficult market dilute, we're employing what's called the prospect generator model. And some of you are probably familiar, have heard this uh, prospect generation, right? So what we do is we go out, we find strategic partners to come in, we'll, we'll sell a portion of the project they'll earn in, they'll fund the exploration for us, typically pay us some cash in stock each year, so we actually generate some cash flow, and we end up with a minority interest in the project at the end of the day. This is exactly what we just did with Arriva. Arriva is now buying 70% of a portion of Preston, for $8 million over the next six years, we, we will retain a minority interest. They'll, they'll be funding all the exploration. It's also great because we get to leverage their geologists, their technical expertise, without me having to go out and hire 100 geologists. We get to use Arriva's geologists to do the work there. So it's a, it's a, a great model to de-risk, uh, to also basically put more irons in the fire. We're gonna have multiple exploration programs between our drilling at Moore and our partners uh, working at these other projects. We then did a deal with another company called Azincourt, similar structure to what we did with Arriva. We're looking to consummate deals on these other projects as well. So you, you have not just the catalyst of us drilling and the discovery potential that we have at Moore, but these other companies too, and they're funding it. So we don't have to continuously raise money. In fact, we can use some of the cash payments coming in to help pay for our drilling at Moore Lake. So it's a, it's a unique model for Sky Harbor in that um, we, yes, we offer that discovery potential similar to what NextGen, what Fission, what Alpha, what Hathor, which was bought out by Rio Tinto, what they offered their investors early on. But instead of just letting the secondary project sit there and collect dust, we're employing the prospect generator model. We brought in an industry leader like Ariba on one of the properties. We're looking at other deals with other companies as well right now. So I'll just quickly finish off here. So this just shows you, uh, let me pull it up here, the chart. So, so this is where we can see we've been quite active this last 12 months, despite a difficult uranium market. We've been moving forward. You'll see here, this was the deal we did with Denison. Obviously, market responded quite well. This was a consolidation. The uranium price basically capitulated there. It actually hit 18, just under $18 a pound last November. In inflation-adjusted terms, the lowest the commodities ever traded at. We did the deal with Arriva, and then here were some good drill results. So the markets pulled back a little bit uh, in the kind of low to mid 40s. We raised some money at a higher price. We're starting our next drill program in August, so you'll start to see news flow coming out, drill results coming out from that. As in court and Arriva, we'll also be working the other project here this summer as well. So lots of news flow, lots to look forward to with the company. Uh, and as I said, we're also looking at forming other joint ventures, other strategic partners coming in as well. So to finish off, just to highlight people, the right team, focused expertise in the Athabasca Basin, Rick and his geological team in Saskatoon, 
uh, have made multiple discoveries in the basin. They know what to look for. One of the other things that's important to note too, new technologies and new innovation, new methodologies that have been used in the basin in the last 10 years have yielded new discoveries at lower costs, right? New geophysical techniques, new types of drilling, right? So we're, we're geochemistry, knowing the geochemistry is a huge thing in the last 10 years. So we're employing all that to, to help make the discoveries. Timing with the uranium market, I think we're, we've seen a bottom. I think we're coming out of it. And last but not least, projects. Our flagship more, the four other projects which we're partnering up with strategic partners on. Lots of catalysts, lots of news flow. So as I said, I'll be at the booth. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want to talk uranium, if you want to talk exploration in the basin, more than happy. Thank you very much.